that is exemplary of the ignorance in this society. Racism is like cancer. If you just talk about it, if you don't talk about it, it will consume you. If you only talk about it and do nothing about it, it will consume you. If you talk about it and also have experts come in and excise it, then you get rid of it. But if you just talk about it, it will consume you. You have, and not talking about racism, is going along to get along. People will continue to feel and think and behave as they always have until somebody comes along and says, wait a minute, do you realize what you're doing? Listen to me, my dear children. If you are a teacher and you're going to stand up in front of a group of students this fall and say, because you are racist, when I see people, I don't see people as black or brown or red or yellow. I just see people as people. Some blooming teacher will do that this fall without exception. You need to know that evident, eventually some kid is going to stand up and say, do you see white fool? And she's going to kick him out of the building, out of the school, and maybe out of, out of the building, out of the room, probably out of the building, out of the school, because he has said to her, what you just said was a racist comment. People, teachers have to realize how what they're being said is being perceived. It doesn't matter what you meant by what you said. What matters is how it is perceived. Perception is everything. And if you see, say things like, now we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And they put their hands over their little hearts, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, and I say them, through their preference, one nation under God, indivisible. Under God wasn't in the pledge until Dwight Eisenhower became president. They inserted those words under God as a result of somebody who was a member of the Knights of Columbus insisting that the words under God belong in the pledge. We have a lot of people in the United States of America who do not say God as their savior and who see a different, a different, a different spiritual entity and the name is not God. We have, take, we have deliberately narrowed, narrowed Inhibited our education. We need to put a stop to it. We need to stop another thing. If you're a teacher, stop calling this country America. America is everything from the northernmost point of Canada to the southernmost point of South America. All the people who live in all those countries are Americans. We in this country think that America is the 48 contiguous states, Alaska, Hawaii, and the islands off the southeastern coast of the United States. No, that doesn't constitute all of America. This country that we live in is the United States of America, and we've got to start calling it the United States of America because the most important part of that title is the word united. And for four years, we had someone who was trying to divide us, to make us the divided states of America. The idea that the Finding Fathers had to call this the United States of America is extremely important, and we have to start talking about the United States of America, and we have to stop calling this country America. This is not all that constitutes America. It's, we teach racism in the schools on a daily basis by doing that very, th that very thing. And another thing we have to do, if you're a teacher, get rid of the Mercator projection map. The Mercator projection map was, Mercator was commissioned by the Pope to make a map that showed the spread of Christianity. So the countries on the Northern Hemisphere are larger than the countries in the Southern Hemisphere. On the Mercator map, Greenland is larger than South America. South America, according to the legend at the bottom of the map, it says South America is actually eight times larger than Greenland. And Africa is something like 14 times larger than Greenland. We need to use a map that shows the countries of the world in their right proportion. We teach racism with our audiovisual materials. It's time for teachers to educate themselves. You can't be an educator if you don't know what you're doing. I'm an educator and I don't know enough, but I'm working on it. The word educator comes from a duck deuce, which means lead, the prefix e, which means out, the suffix ate, which means the act of, and the suffix or, which means one who does. An educator is one who is engaged in the act of leading people out of ignorance. And you can't lead students out of ignorance if you're still teaching that Columbus discovered America. Columbus was not the first person who set foot on this, con this country that we call America and on this continent. People from Africa were the original settlers of this continent. <laughs> if you haven't seen the National Geographic magazine for 2018, go to the library, sign out a copy of it, and make a copy of the map that's in that magazine. Enlarge it and put it on the wall. 
and let your students see where we all came from and how those people, over two waves of those people, those people were people of color, managed to get from the area of the equator to populate every landmass on the face of the earth. You have to, re kids have to realize that. Kids have to realize that we all came from those first modern human beings who evolved in sub-Saharan Africa between 300,000 and 500,000 years ago. You also have to stop referring to people as white and black. Send them to the dictionary. Look up the word white. It means pure and good. Look up the word black. It means savage and evil. You separate people into purity and evil, and you automatically create a problem we, ne we need never have had. We are all, here's another thing you need to do in that National Geographic magazine. There's a set of, uh, there's probably, oh, I don't know how many pictures of people of different colors. And under each one of those pictures is the word Pantone and a number. Each of them has a number on the Pantone color wheel. Get a copy of the Pantone color wheel. Put it on the wall in the classroom. Have the kids go up, put their hands on it with, so that the back of their hands is showing so that they can compare the color on the back of their hand to the colors on that Pantone color wheel till they find one that matches their skin color. And then decide what that color is. Look at, go to, then go to the thesaurus. Look up brown and find all the synonyms for brown. It is absolutely fantastic how many different shades of brown there are. Let them pick up one that they think matches that name, matches their skin color. And then use that for their skin color instead of white and black. We will never get this thing together as long as we are separated into white and black. People do not exist who are white and black. White and black exists in cattle, horses, sheep, dogs, cats, rabbits come in white and black. Human beings do not. We come in shades of brown because we all come from the same ancestors back there all those many years ago. And just... <laughs> Let your kids get the, get the absolutely remarkable experience of learning about those people, those people, which has been a phrase that had been used to say about them, you know, that those people were here first. They were here 10, 20, between 20,000 and 10,000 years before Columbus was ever a gleam in his father's eye. We'd better start talking about the people who really settled this continent instead of Christopher Columbus who came here because he was trying to re reach the east by sailing west. And so the people he met, he thought, were Indians, because we must he must have been in, the, in, in India. He didn't reach India, and they weren't Indians, and they didn't call themselves Indians. They called themselves the people. It's time for us to start realizing that those people came from Africa just like all the rest of us did.